Today, in the spirit, I felt inadequate. I felt malnourished. And I saw the lack of Christ-likeness in my character. Like, it took more effort to be patient. It took more effort to exercise kindness today. A sandwich today, a turkey and ham or whatever is in the fridge. I didn't really get to get in God's presence that much this morning because a friend called me like right when I was waking up. And um, you know when friends call you and they're sobbing, <laughs> you answer and you talk to them. And so the time I would have spent with Jesus this morning, I spent it talking to my friend and loving on her. There's something about Jesus being your daily bread and him satisfying you consistently. Like I'm affected. Have you ever fasted? You skip one meal and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. When you fast, you fast a whole a whole day, your body feels it. Your body's like, I need food, I need nourishment. You might feel weak, you might feel lightheaded, you might have rumblies in your tummy. <laughs> when we miss out on the meal of Jesus, your spirit says, I need food, I need nourishment. He's the bread that comes down from heaven. He's our sustenance, even in the prayer that we affectionately refer to as the Lord's Prayer. Uh, the scripture says, give us this day our daily bread. I don't think that's physical sustenance necessarily. I believe everything according to life and godliness we receive by coming to know him. That knowing, the intimate knowing in 2 Peter chapter 1, that's like his presence, his nearness. And so today in the spirit I felt inadequate. I felt malnourished for the day. And I saw the lack of of Christ-likeness in my character switch over from uh, Mary just a little bit over to Martha. Like it took more effort to be patient. It took more effort to exercise kindness today. And uh, even when I came home, I walked into the house and I opened the refrigerator and I just I wanted to eat the leftover buttered biscuit breakfast in the fridge. It's almost midnight. Actually, it's past midnight. It's 12.34. I do not need to be eating a bunch of carbs in me and stuff. I'm not even hungry, but my flesh, something in me, like it desires to be satisfied. It's seeking some sort of satisfaction. John Piper said, sin is what we do when we're not satisfied with God. I'm not hungry. My tummy's not rumbling, but I'm going to the fridge to eat food at 12 o'clock at night. And that's the wrong answer. I think a lot of times we as human beings, we reach for things to satisfy us when really our soul wants the presence of God. We desire the true bread from heaven to nourish us. And when we are malnourished due to a lack of satisfaction in God's presence, we're going to seek that satisfaction in other places. It could be food. It could be a relationship. It could be, let me post a photo on Facebook so I get some likes. Whatever it is, it's not going to really do the job. Especially with cycles. That perpetual behaviors and, and reaching for certain things will only have a temporary, a temporary fleeting satisfaction. I found myself, um, Remembering an injustice against me. Refeeling all of the feelings. Well, not all of them. Refeeling some of those um, feelings of bitterness and hurt. And um, expecting the person who had wronged me to, I don't know, apologize. <laughs> and, um, that in itself is um, its a fruit of a lack of satisfaction in Christ. 
when I'm fully satisfied in Him, when I've looked at His face, when I've eaten of the bread of heaven, I have mercy for people. And I don't remember the sins of those who committed sins against me. That's why this is so important to stay in God's presence. We should not surrender the secret place to anyone or anything. I think that's why distractions also are so dangerous. The enemy wants to distract us from seeking God. The enemy wants us to believe that the fleeting pleasure of the vice we're seeking is more satisfying than God's presence. And many of us have never experienced God's presence. We don't know how satisfying it is. <laughs> but I do, I know better. <laughs> but I can't want God without God. I can't love Jesus without Jesus. I can't hunger and thirst for Him without Him giving me that hunger and thirst for Him. So if I learn anything today, how valuable the secret place is and how, how easily I can walk back in the ways of someone who's never tasted the goodness of the Lord. Today, me how to stay humble for sure. <laughs> I know that um, nothing can replace God's presence. There's no vice, no TV show, no relationship, no food, no hobby that can replace God's tangible nearness. If you find yourself reaching for things, reaching for distractions, here's a big one, phone. <laughs> it might be time to ask Jesus to help you, to show you that he is more satisfying than me. Today, ask him to keep you.